Now, just a few months ago, at the end of 2021, we received one of the largest integrity updates I think old school RuneScape has ever seen, and that was adding a tax to the Grand Exchange. So back on December 9th, a 1% tax was added to the GE. Now, this was huge, at least for my channel. There's a lot to discuss, but pretty much a couple weeks after the addition of the tax, I kind of forgot all about it. After a few weeks, the novelty wore off and it's just another part of the game that I really don't think about too much. Uh, but today I want to have a look back at the last couple of months to see how it's been doing. I mean, how effective has the Grand Exchange tax been? How much gold is it generally removing from the game? Has it had a significant effect on the price of items? Has it changed my own personal buying behavior at all? There's just a few things I want to discuss today and I hope you find it useful. If you enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to leave a like on the video. It helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. Now the Grand Exchange tax is broken into two main components, a 1% tax on the majority of items in the Grand Exchange. Pretty simple, whenever you sell an item on the GE, you are gonna be taxed 1% of the item's value up to a cap of 500 mil or five mil per transaction. Now that is simply just a way to get gold out of the economy. However, to help also stabilize item prices, they're also gonna be using some of that gold to buy actual items off the Grand Exchange and then delete them. Now they are only doing this with a small list of items which they have published, uh, so we know which ones should be affected. Now let's start off by looking at the item sink. Now from that small list of items that are getting sunk from the tax, has the Grand Exchange tax had an effect on their item price? That's kind of an interesting question because if we have a look, for example, at the Kraken Tentacle, go to December 9th, yes, there was a huge effect for this item in particular. Uh, GE Tracker actually plots exactly when the tax was added, super nifty. Uh, so yeah, we can see that after the tax was added, the item spiked by 200% uh, or something like it, it over doubled in price. But does that mean the tax was effective or does that mean the news of the tax being added was effective? And that will be the most challenging thing to answer because why well, we don't really know. Totally possible that Jagex just isn't buying these items at all. We wouldn't know and their price still could be going up just due to perception and that people think that these items are being sunk, thus the price is going up. To counter that, what would have happened if Jagex didn't reveal what items were gonna be sunk with the tax? Would anything have changed? Would anyone be able to guess what items were on that list? Personally, I think probably not. So looking at a longer term view here, for example, the Kraken Tentacle, there's a huge spike, obviously. But I mean, currently it's around 480k, where earlier this year it was lower than that. Another item here is the Dex Prayer Scroll. If we look back over the year, the price has gone up a lot. That said, because these are PVM items, it's kind of hard to say for sure whether the tax is responsible to a large degree or a small degree or even at all. But we can say earlier in the year, the Dex was worth around 12 mil and now it's worth 20 mil. So that's a significant change. Okay, so here we have an interesting one, the Arcane. Earlier in the year, 400k. Once the tax came out, it spiked up to 3 mil and now it's down to 1 mil. So let's just try to ignore this lump in the middle here. Has it been effective? It's hard to say. It kind of seems like it was already trending in that direction before any news of the tax was even announced. Uh, so we definitely couldn't say that for certain. Now the big issue with trying to determine how effective this tax has been comes down to the fact that most of these items are used in PVM and there are much larger factors that change their price. For example, the armadillo chest plate you could look at. You can say that well after the tax was announced in November and leading up to the addition of it, the price has trended upwards, sure it crashed a bit, but it's rebounded higher than it was three or four months ago. So you could say that it looks like the tax affected that, but Probably it didn't, this is probably just the next update. The demand for Armadil being used in new PVM content will change the price much more than this 1% tax has. Another example is the Dark Bow. The Dark Bow is on that list as well. So around November it started to go up, but has it remained high because of the GE tax or because some people use it at next once again? Is the item like the Occult worth more than it was a year ago because of the tax that was added in November or is it because there's a third raid coming out this year and that is impacting the price more. I'm of the opinion that most likely a 1% tax hasn't had a noticeable effect on item prices, but that is just the item sink component. What about the gold sink? To give you some more hard facts, I mean, this is a few days old now, but like around after the first six days or so, in total, we'd seen 180 billion gold taken in tax. Now, 
75% of that was sunk out of the game completely. And the rest went into obviously buying some of the items out of the game on those deletion lists. So it's like over, it's around 7,000 items were taken out of the game from those first six days. Um, that's across that initial list. So, you know, your twisted bows, your arcane shields, etc. Now, I just showed you a clip from a live stream from December 16th. This was just about a week after the GE tax was added. So these numbers may change over time, but let's just assume that they are roughly going to be flat for the foreseeable future. So Kieran said 180 bill was removed in the first six days from the economy, which is 30 bill a day. Now that's corroborated pretty well with the wiki source data. So 30 billion gold a day removed from the Grand Exchange tax. That is massive. That is about 11 trillion GP a year. Now with that said, as Kieran mentioned, 75% of that is used to sink gold, while 25% of that is left to sink items. So to be more specific, around 22 bill is sunk from the economy every day, while 7.5 bill is used to purchase items for the item sink. Now it goes on to mention that within the first six days, around 7,000 items were taken out of the game, which is around 1,100 per day. Now from that, we can extrapolate that the average item value that is being deleted is around 6.5 mil. So for the most part, cheaper items are being deleted while more expensive ones are not as frequent. At the time of these numbers being released, the entire cost of the item list, that being all of the items that are being sunk, was around 2.7 bill. But if we go ahead and take out just the three most expensive items, those being the scythe, the twisted bow, and the harmonized orb, the total cost goes down to around 775 mil, so significantly cheaper. You could look at this a different way too. If you use the 7.5 bill you get a day to sink items, you could do on average three of each item a day if you included everything, or if you excluded the most expensive items, you could do 10 items a day, as uh, so you're able to sink a much larger quantity of a larger variety of items if you ignore the most expensive ones. Now that said, after the first week, Jagex added in more items to be added to the item sync list. This included stuff such as the Inquisitors, Zenites, uh, Ancestral, and just a ton of other items, significantly expanding the list. So the reality is that as the list gets bigger and the scope of the item sync grows, how effective it is also shrinks. Now the mods have mentioned this even in live streams, stating that the 1% tax might not be enough for such a large item list, and they have even discussed increasing the tax. Now during the Q&A they mentioned that they could raise it more to help pay for more items, but they'd probably do it in a different way. Uh, because the system is fairly flexible, you could have close to a 2% tax for luxury goods, or high-end cosmetic items, and then less for more common things, so you could have different categories, and that is something they might consider in the future. Now, I think that kind of is all to say that has the Grand Exchange tax been effective? Yes, but I would say probably more so the gold sink aspect of it. The amount of gold that is being collected from the tax is significant, and the amount of gold being deleted from the game is also extremely significant. Trillions of GP every year is probably the biggest gold sink in the game. On the flip side though, we have the item sink component. Now based on what some of the moderators have said and the numbers, it seems like the actual item sink might not be able to be supported, considering that while the item list is large, it still only encompasses a small selection of PVM items. And that doesn't include future items that haven't even been added yet or new ones such as the next items. But that said, in the end, is the goal of the item sync to push item prices upwards to a specific value or just to be one part of a solution on how to have a healthy economy? I think it's probably the latter. And in that sense, it is probably doing its job. Obviously, it is better than nothing, but we might not see significant price changes based on the tax. So anyway, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. Let me know down below what you think. Has a GE tax been effective? Do you think it should be increased or decreased or... Is it perfect the way it is? Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Cesarium OSRS, The Hybrid, Alejandra, Sejuani's Flail, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon tier. Thank you guys so much, really appreciate it. 
Also a giant thank you to Ryan Shady, Mexos, Base Titch, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for all subscribing at the Runite tier. Really means a lot. As always, if you are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is a great way to support me directly. You will be immortalized in all of my future videos, uh, get access to a custom role in my Discord server, and my video release schedule. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time.